Hey, my name is Praying for Exits, and today we're going to talk about why startups work and the things that happen when they don't. I think that startups start failing the day that they're started. There are certain things that can be sort of like the death sentence for startups right at the very beginning. And those only get magnified over time. The more money that you raise, the more interest that you see in your startup, these things just tend to compound. And if things start off very badly, it is very unlikely that they will finish well. One is that there is some sort of disagreement with the founders that is just unfixable. And it makes not only the work environment a sort of hostile place, but also makes it so that people can't really do their best work. If you have sort of either social or intellectual disagreements between you and some of the founding team, it's very difficult to get over that, especially as the company gets larger. The second one is when people start companies, they don't really have a good sense of what the market is and who their customer is. You might have the best idea in the world, but you might have underestimated how many people actually care about this idea. And if you don't have a good sense of building something that a lot of people want, there's a very low ceiling on where your startup can get to. And customers is another aspect of that. If you don't understand who your customers are, you might underestimate how difficult it is to actually sell to these customers provide them something of value, and that can make your startup sink. And then the third thing is either raising too much or too little money. I think that you have to have a very good understanding of exactly how much money it will take to get your dreams into reality. On the too little side, you might not necessarily have enough money to get you to the place where your startup actually works. Most startups are not very efficient for their first couple of years, and then they get more efficient over time as they get a feedback loop of their customers and their sales cycle, etc. And then if you raise too much money, money is one of those things where it magnifies both problems and solutions. And so if you have a bunch of problems in your startup and you raise a bunch of money, those problems only tend to get worse. And so having a good sense of exactly how much money you need is a really important aspect of the very early days of a startup. The second that things start to work, you have to continue to build infrastructure around yourself. So one of the things that when I talk to founders and CEOs who are having issues with growth, it's because your job fundamentally changes when you get bigger, right? You go from being somebody who's focused on this idea that you really care about and you're really passionate about all of a sudden to managing people and building an actual company. And I think for a lot of people in the Valley, most people are these very idea driven people who want to build things technically that are fun and interesting to use and useful to people, but they don't really care about the intricacies of actually running a business and running a business fucking sucks sometimes having to pay taxes and figure out what your payroll is and how health insurance works and all these things. Most people who are founders aren't necessarily very good at that. That's why you build a team around you that is. But a lot of people who start startups have never had to hire people before and they tend to lean on hiring their friends or hiring people just within their specific network. I think that the best startups find the best people. And unfortunately, that's oftentimes not people that you directly know, but people you have to go and seek out. And so talent and being able to attract good talent to the idea that you have is a very important function of running a startup successfully. And if you're not able to find the best people for your idea, it is very unlikely that you'll get to the place that you want to go with it. The last one is kind of like these indeterminate variables that most people might not see. A good example of this is if you started a crypto startup in 2020, there's a bunch of regulation that changed around what was legal and not legal to do. And so a lot of startups failed specifically because of something that was largely out of their control. Government came along and said, this isn't something that's tenable. We don't care if you've built companies in this space. We don't like this. And so unfortunately, especially when you're in the most frontier aspects of technology, there's always a risk that somebody could come along and say, hey, fuck you. You can't work on this anymore. That's largely out of your hands, but it is always a risk. And you do see it in a lot of startups where the government comes in and says, hey, don't do this anymore. There should be a high level of intentionality when you start a startup. There's an incredible opportunity cost in starting a startup. If you do a startup well, it will take 10 years of your life away. It's almost guaranteed that it'll be 10 years of your life dedicated to this one specific idea. And so I think that a lot of people in the modern day have maybe fetishized what being a startup founder is like. I, I personally have done it before. It is a very shitty experience from time to time, actually most of the time. But I think that the payoff is huge if you're willing to stick around and see it all the way through. But I do think that at the very start, you should be very intentional about the types of people that you are starting your business with because because there's no coming back from it. As soon as that contract is locked in, you are with that person for the next 10 years. And if you can't see yourself doing that with that person, it is very unlikely that you're going to be successful. Or if you are successful, it will come off the back of a lot of pain and headache and just stress in your life. And so I think that one piece of advice that I would give to people is just be extremely intentional about who you have around you and how you start your startup. So yeah, that's the five things that I would say are the most common ways that a startup fails and how you can maybe avoid that. If you want to learn a little bit more about me and how I got into venture capital, please click the video over here. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you have any ideas of things that we could cover in the future, please comment below and we'll do our best to make a video about it.